my pleasure, Deborah, to have you here. I know it's been a long day. You've had your keynote presentation and your masterclass, but I just wanted to sort of end the day with a, a really succinct discussion about mindfulness. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is mindfulness has become, in some sense, a little bit of a buzzword in management circles in the same way agile or digital HR has become. But mindfulness is not a new practice. It's been around for quite a long time, and there are many different ways that it's expressed in religion or meditation or other practices. Why is mindfulness now seeing a resurgence in popular you know, terminology? And what is the importance of mindfulness for not just people, but in a business environment as well? Mm. So your first question is, why is mindfulness maybe now um, coming into play? And you're right, Ben, it is an, an ancient tradition. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think now that people are wanting the skills to deal with a very dislocated, divisive, disruptive world where everything looks maybe scary, um, how am I going to survive in this new world and there's so much uncertainty and ambiguity and mindfulness, the fundamental capacity it teaches you is to be okay with what's here, not to judge what's here, not to want it to be something else, but to be absolutely okay that whatever is happening right now is all that is meant to be. Yeah. So actually, I think it leads to a much calmer, more accepting life. Yeah. One of the phrases that you have in the title of your book and of course in your presentations is still moving and of course your consultancy as well. And I love this term because it basically juxtaposes the, the two terms. You know, you, how can you be still and moving at the same time? And I'd just like you to go into a little bit more detail about what this terminology means to you personally and how it influences your work with organizations, uh, leading change management programs, uh, and helping people through these difficult transitions. Well, I always contrast what I call action or movement in change. And a lot of change efforts fail, I believe, because we're stuck in busy action. We haven't actually hit the pause button to be still to notice our routines to notice our routines. And that is why I think leaping onto a lot of new techniques and tools, whereas you haven't actually just hit the pause button to say, what's really going on for me here right now? And the research found that the moment you can tune into and regulate your inner response to what's happening, you can then move things around you much more easily. So it all depends on the quality of your inner condition, i.e. stillness. So I claim that all movement starts in stillness. You can't move a system if you're so busy that you're not noticing your routines. Indeed. And obviously for leaders this becomes incredibly important because they have so much responsibility in their organizations for the people, for, for the companies, for the financial returns, for, for any number of things. And yet it's, there's this constant almost fetishization of movement and action and we must yes. act fast and fast and fast and fast. So in your practical experience, uh, how do you? How is it possible for leaders to embrace this in a in a stillness, in a calm? What can leaders do on a practical level to help them be better at being mindful about their inner condition and how that then leads on to the change management or in their organisation? Well, we just had a masterclass actually where we did some very practical things, um, and one of them is being when you actually arrive in a meeting. Very often you're late from the previous meeting. You haven't done the pre-read, and everybody arrives very rushed, and they've got this huge agenda and not not enough time. Is to actually start the meeting with one minute silence. And we did one minute silence just now in the masterclass, and everybody said we judge how long was that yeah. which is very very interesting yeah. and they thought oh well it was 30 seconds or whatever but it was amazing how just having one minute silence at the start of a meeting allows you to fully arrive yeah. to really be present and then to check in with what's here and the reason why that's so important in whole system change is that the the team that are arriving what you're picking up right now might be a symptom of what's happening in the wider culture so this is not a soft, fluffy stuff about, oh, how are you, how's the family, or whatever. It's tuning into your emotions, because that's probably a clue as to what the wider system is tuning into. So if you're not still, you can't sense the system. If you're not present to yourself, you can't be present to other people. Uh, on the topic of, of change management, obviously you've been involved with many change programs around the world, many different organizations. It's a huge topic, and I know you've brought this up before in your presentation and a conversation we had previously about you'd like to see the term changing being applied more often, as in change is happening constantly now, all the time. It's no longer a single one process change to an end state. This is something which is a, a small cognitive, I guess a cognitive trick that we must learn and teach ourselves to be conscious of. If you had the chance to talk to more executives, whether in a meeting room or uh, any kind of boardroom, 
What are the ways that you can help get this point across to people, maybe if people are listening in their organisations, to understand the need for constant change and how this informs being mindful and agile in your responses to a system which is quite harsh in some ways? Change is constant, so we must also be capable of moving with the change as fast and not being stuck in this mindset of, oh, the change is a single thing that we can finish, and that's a clean end point when we know that's not the case. Well, one way I bring it to their attention is to look at the world of living systems, mm -hmm. whether it's climate or weather patterns or the planet or the earth or just studying a flock of birds or colonies of ants or whatever. The living system is constantly in motion. So why wouldn't a human system also be constantly in motion? So for me, you make it less scary as if I'm going to be always in constant change. So that is the way the world works. So when you're working with what I call more emergent change, you're trying to harness the natural small changes that are happening every day by the coffee machine, in meetings, people coming in with a new question that no one's heard of before. So for me, it's not as if you've got constant big change. The more you can get better at doing ongoing little change, then you don't have to have the big disruptions every five years. So for me, it's harnessing the natural power of human systems to continually adapt um, and innovate. But what I do also know from the research into complex adaptive systems that you can only stay in constant change when you've got an equal balance of stability and disruption. So ironically, systems that can continually change are also staying very stable on certain dynamics, be that the culture, the values, or whatever. So I also say to people, don't worry, because to be in constant change, half of what you do has to be the same. So, boy, that makes it easier for people. <laughs> and, and ties us right back to still moving. Exactly. Thank you again. Deborah, it was a pleasure to talk to you and uh, I know you've got to head off now, so a safe trip back and Thank you. I'd love to have another conversation again sometime. So. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you.